Hi, it's Therese from Lost in Paper and I'm really excited because Altenew are releasing their own collection of watercolours and it comes in a 36 half pan set and they are artist grade so it's really exciting. And I just thought I'd share the unboxing here with you. They always have the most beautiful packaging. <laughs> I don't know, but you could almost frame the packaging and put it on the wall. Anyway, it comes um, wrapped. I had this delivered to Australia and had no problems with it coming through the post, but it does come wrapped with some bubble wrap to protect it. Now the case, I was really surprised at how sturdy this case is and how it's actually a little bit heavy. <laughs> I didn't think it would be, but it was. And it's um, like a lot of the watercolour sets, it does have a lid. And oh, this has got actually a sheet of vellum in it or something similar just to protect the um, colours. Um, but it does have a lid that you can mix your colours in like a palette. And it does come with its own brush. And each of the colours are, here's the best part, Ulta New Colours. <laughs> so they matchy match. They match all their other products. And they are labelled underneath. But what I did decide to do was actually um, swatch out my colours. And then once all this was dry, I did actually come back and label them as well. But as I'm swatching them out, because they are watercolours, I'm actually swatching out every second colour and every alternate so that the colours didn't bleed into each other too much. But this was just to give me a rough idea of what the colours were because it's actually really quite hard to tell which colours are what by just looking at them. Some of them actually look black, but they're purple. I know, right? Anyway, beautiful colours. And... I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with these colours so I thought the best way to really um, practice and just see what they can do was to create a background piece and I just wanted to see how these colours blend. So this is a piece of Archer's watercolour cardstock, it's a smooth one, it's a 300 gram and I did actually add some water to the cardstock first. Then I'm picking up the colour with my paintbrush and just letting it drop onto the cardstock onto the cardstock just to see um, how the pigment would uh, react and also to react with other colours as well so uh, you know me I love my orange and pinks together so I did decide to sort of focus on those today and this piece of cardstock is actually bigger than what I need. So I figured, well, I'm just playing anyway, so I just want to really see what the colours can do. And I am mixing them up. I can't remember what colours I added, other than that they were in the pink families and the orange families. But I do remember that the dark orange is the Autumn Blaze, and that's, to be honest, one of my favourite colours in their whole... Um, like all their cardstock, the, the Autumn Blaze cardstock is just amazing. So it's really nice to have a colour in paint that's the same. So, and this really, I'm really enjoying because I haven't had a lot to do with watercolours. They're still fairly new to me. So that's one of my missions this year. I'm going to actually um, focus a little bit on watercolouring. So this is perfect timing. Thanks, Alton, you. <laughs> and I do like the way that the... Because I often use the Bristol White, Bristol Smooth cardstock, which is not technically a watercolour cardstock. It does hold water pretty well, but um, this being proper watercolour cardstock does actually work so much better. The thing for me is it's not bright white, and I like that bright white. All right, once this was dry, I did add some spatters as well. And then, like I said, I'd actually cut more than I needed. So what I decided to do, so I had an epiphany, I decided to actually stamp my image directly onto the watercolour cardstock that I'd already coloured. <laughs> and then add my paint to that. So this is, uh, this stamp set's called Peony spray and it's beautiful 
flower and I stamped it with some waterproof ink and I did use my Misty because it's a um, it's not a, it is a smooth cardstock but just so I could do a couple of impressions I did actually use my Misty and stamp the waterproof ink a couple of times and what I'm doing here is actually painting most of the leaves individually starting with my darkest shade of my color where I pick up the color towards the base of the petal I'm saying leaves didn't I I did say leaves petals <laughs> individually and then just sort of dragging my color out and sometimes adding a bit of water to help it dilute or sort of fade out that little bit to make the edges of the petals look a little bit lighter but I had heaps of fun doing this I kind of forgot that I was on camera <laughs> I just was painting and I did come back in I pretty much used the first three pinks and maybe even a touch of the fourth um, just to add a bit of depth to the center and some of the creases of the flower once I'd finished painting and let it dry I did come in I do have the matching dye for this but I didn't want the orange edge it could have been funky to leave it on as an orange edge but I did decide to actually come in and die cut die cut it and fussy cut it out myself and it wasn't actually that hard to do because it's such um, a big flower all right, so this is part of a blog hop and a release. So Altenew have lots of prizes to give away. And to find out more about that, just head through the description below and um, you'll get the link to my blog hop post and find out how you can win. And also to find out who else is along the hop. I've got the whole list of everyone else involved and there is some amazing talent. So you don't want to miss out on that either. So back to the card, um, I did decide to cut out just from some white normal cardstock. This is the watercolor stripes cover dye, and this is the first time I've used it. I really like this dye; it's fun. And there's a stencil that's exactly the same too, so that's heaps of fun too. I have a sentiment, and I am stamping this in my misty because it's a really fine sentiment, and. If I did need to stamp it again, I could. It's from the Oriental Orchid stamp set. I have added some foam dots to the back of my stripes panel and popped it up on my watercolor cardstock panel, which didn't warp too much, by the way. It was pretty good, but I did actually run it through my die cutting machine just to straighten it out that little bit. Popped that on the front of my card and Here's my flower, all fussy cut out, and I was kind of looking at putting it on an angle, which would have been nice, but in the end, I decided to um, stand it sort of straight up and down on the card. And I did actually pop this up as well. And then I just flipped the card over and snapped off the, snapped off, snipped off <laughs> the little piece of stem that was hanging over. And here's the best bit. Because it all matches, I can use the enamel dots. These are from both the Our Family and the New Day enamel dots. Um, they're actually the scrapbook sets, but you can buy these enamel dots individually. And they're the perfect colors. See, how easy is that? It takes the guesswork out of it. <laughs> all right, so I look forward to seeing you at my blog. Thanks for joining me today. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye.